Wagwan people, we are back, finally, player of the year career mode is back again, episode 30, I've been away for a week so there's been no video so I'll try and get a couple up this week, hope you're all good, but I did visit Italy this week to go to a Roma Udinese game and my goodness what an atmosphere, but anyway, back into the action, we are here Reggie Boy Jr with Everton, we've got five games in this episode, Evan have fallen off the boil recently. We were challenging for the title, could you believe, with West Ham leading the way alongside Liverpool. But things have started to slip up. Frank Lampard's tactics are getting sussed out. The same 11 players play every blooming week, so we're absolutely goosed. So we did start off against Leicester City, if you're from America, or Leicester City from the UK. It's good to see some of the Premier League teams are changing about a little bit, as you can see. Yeah, Leicester City's team has completely changed. A couple of old school players in there from their original team from nowadays, but George Hurst must be a regen. I've got a clue. That must be the new Jamie Vardy or something. Let's hope his pace isn't good. So, like I said, we've fallen off the ball a little bit this season. Uh, we're not getting that many attacking threats. It's only me scoring the goals. I think I'm the only one in double figures this season. Uh, and for some reason, I'm getting all the flack for this bad run of form. I'm the one getting low ratings where Dwight McNeil's get about seven points something. But early doors, Reggie Boy Jr. kept that goal scoring record up. 1 0 to Everton after 22 minutes. And what a flowing move for Everton. I've noticed on FIFA as well, no one seems to do any kind of high ball crosses. They're all across the ground. I mean, look at this crap. But yeah, for some reason, if I don't do well, I get back a six point something or whatever. I'm dropping down the start in 11 mixture. But yet the two wingers, Saar and McNeil, who scored three goals combined, get a 7.9 every game for making about 18 passes just back to their fullbacks. The absolute liberties! But like I say, this man is doing all the good things. And if Everton do end up in Europe this season, it will be because of Reggie Boy Jr. No little ball across. I mean, look at this geezer here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait till you see the replay. He made it 2-0 Reggie Boy Jr. though. Let's look at this replay. This guy come across here looking like Jackie Chan on crack, trying to kick me in the damn head. Reggie Boy Jr. just calmly let him float past like Neo from the Matrix and then side footed it into the corner. The Everton crowd go absolutely crazy. But when you see it from the third angle, the second angle, this is just hilarious. The ball comes across. You'll see this dude trying to Jackie Chan me in the face. Look at this guy. What the ass are you doing? The third angle's even better. You just see this dude fly past me. There he goes. <laughs> this FIFA moving matter Reggie Boy Judy got his second goal oh my goodness and then a couple of minutes to go for some reason Leicester sent the goalkeeper up what on earth they're doing we broke cleanly look at that good challenge from Reggie Boy Jr and then the afterburners are on keepers trying to trap back like nobody's business and then Reggie Boy Jr found the angle took the shot and got his hat trick from a long distance shot beautifully done hat trick hero it says in the corner what a goal from Reggie Boy Jr and three points in the bag and the worm to finish it off as well. And we need those three points. Like I said, we've been dropping points. We lost the Merseyside derby against Liverpool, which I scored probably the goal of the season in. So if you haven't watched that episode, go back and watch it after this one. But look at the goalkeeper. Looking like a kid on Christmas morning trying to run downstairs to find out if Santa's been. Oh my goodness. And all is there is an own goal for your brother. So 3-0 against Leicester. A good win. And Everton back in the points. And we needed it after the Merseyside derby. But look at this clinical finish. Oh my goodness, pinpoint like a postage stamp. So give me that match ball, come on, look at Ten Hag's finally gone into refereeing. Look at that, beautifully done. We'll get that match ball and a good rating for Reggie Boy Jr. 8.6 for some reason for a hat-trick. Yeah, I don't know, it, liberties, I, I, I guess, it is what it is. It is what it is, brothers, but we press on with the press on. So the dress room is high, we've got three objectives done as well. Sometimes objectives are absolute liberties, but... We're getting there. We're not, I mean, we should beat the starting 11 max every week. I mean, it's just crazy. I'm better than all these damn players. I'll say it. I said it. So that puts us back into the Champions League places. We're seven points off West Ham, who still unbelievably are doing amazing this season. Uh, I think I got 25 out of those 31 goals. So then we headed to Ellen Road. Always a tough place to go in, York, in West Yorkshire. And again, a game that really we thought we could step in and win. Uh, Leeds don't have, uh, obviously, their goalkeeper in Montpellier. The back force changes. Well, Christensen's still there, though. Tyler Adams is still there. Gabby's still there. Somerville, who I do rate, Somerville should play more often, I do believe. So, and the Hoffman up front, because obviously Patrick Bamford plays for Everton. So, whenever I get subbed, Bamford comes on. Can you believe it? it exactly. But anyway, uh, the Everton team is the same as always. <laughs> Bar a change at left back. Sometimes Andrich comes into midfield, but usually it's the same slow formation. 
So yeah, I think after this season, even if we do get Champions League or Europa League football, if we can get a team that's in Europe next season, I think we might have to move on. Something that's got a bit more of an attacking kind of formation. So, at Ellen Road, the crowd is hostile. But again, this man can do his thing. Nice little ball through. Beautiful play by Everton. Slick movement. And we took the lead after 27 minutes. And I do believe it was Andrich with our first goal. Beautiful start. And I'm thinking, yep, yeah, let's have it. Another three points in the bag. And yet again, another brother that wears short sleeve shirts, but wears gloves. Makes no damn sense. I mean, I don't believe it. What's going on? Uh, anyway, we press on with the press on. Ever oh, Everton then slipped up. Leeds United came back at us. Good attacking play as well again by Leeds United. And I think Jesse Marsh is still in charge on this uh, on this save that I've got here. Because obviously we've still got Lampard. And Jesse Marsh playing that power ball football. But again, look at that defending. Absolutely shocking. Everton, it's just look at that. And then the goalkeeping save as well. So Leeds got back into it. Which really, that goal should never have counted. <sighs> so yeah. 1-1 one, one, at Lynn Road. Uh, but we weren't done there. We had to play all the way through it. But again, Reggie Boy Jr. losing the ball for half time though. Ball over the top, and again, we've got like 15 players at the back, but yet we can't defend. I mean, look at this. And Lees took a 2-1 lead right before half-time in a game that we controlled. Ah, wasn't good. Wasn't good, brothers. Wasn't good at all. So, 2-1 down to Leeds at Ellen Road. It's always a tough fight back at Ellen Road. But again, the defending was just so poor, considering that we've got one of the best defensive records in the league. We had to fight back. Reggae Boy Jr. again, bursting through. Got challenged last minute. I mean, look at this. I go down to a 6.3 for losing possession, but my teammates lose it constantly. Can you believe it? Poor clearance out, though, by Leeds United. And after 65 minutes, Diokore again bounced the ball across. I'm trying to find some space, but Dwight McNeil managed to bobble his way through and get the equaliser. Thinking, finally, some rubber the green, at least. And again, this guy's celebrating like he's just won the World Cup for England. I mean, come on, Dwight. Calm down, bro. So 2-2 at Ellen Road. I'm thinking, right, brilliant. We can now press on and get the winner. But it wasn't to be, again, poor defending. We've got a back five, and we just can't keep teams out at the moment. Ball across again, no one following the markers. Good save by Pickford, though. But it wasn't to be. Lees did find the winner. They made some changes. And again, we just couldn't hold them off. The crowd was up, the set pieces were going. And there you go, back stick header from the Hoffman. Can you believe it? He must be related to uh, David Hasselhoff. The Hoffman made it 3-2 to Leeds United. And that was all she wrote. We could not get back into this game. We tried our best, but a 3-2 defeat at Ellen Road. Again, like I said, we just, look, these passes back here, they're not good enough. We need to be quicker to the feet. There we go. Nice little ball round. And like I said, Reggie Boy Jr. tried his best to find that equaliser. And the moments we had, unfortunately, their goalkeeper, Medley, whatever his bloody called, Mebels or something, was there to break every shot we had. So 3-2 defeat against Leeds off the back of a 3-0 win against Leicester. Like I said, we just can't seem to get that form together at the moment. Like I said, Ellen Road is a tough place to go, but really the goals we conceded there weren't good enough. We aren't good enough at the back. Pickford should have saved the first one. The back five should have dealt with it. No goal today for Reggie Boy Jr. though. And again, I got the flack for that, even though the defence were poor today. So I got given a 7.2. I mean, yes, I only had two shots on goal, but I must have made about 85 million passes to try and set things up. So, somber in the dressing room. I did hit three objectives, which was like 85% bloody possession and whatever for the rest of the team. So, I then dropped down to nearly a sub. I mean, can you believe it? We dropped down to fifth as well after that defeat against Leeds United. Liverpool go to top of the league. So, after that, we then hosted Bournemouth at home. A game again where we're looking into this thinking, right, we can get all three points against Bournemouth. But yet again, Lampard went with that defensive system. Teams like this, we need to change the shape. I mean, he keeps getting flack from the media. I keep backing him, but I don't know if, he, if, if managers get sacked. It'd be good if they did, if managers changed about on it, because then we might get a change in formation, because he's going to play this damn formation for the rest of FIFA, by the looks of it. Uh, Bournemouth still playing their trade in the Premier League. Martin Darun and Rastin Christie. So again, they've got a few brothers that are still there. They've got Triori up front as well. And unfortunately, this was a match to forget. A dire match. A nil-nil here at Goodison Park. Not for the one to try in, though. Again, trying all that little link-up play, making all the runs. But again, I'm getting the flack for the actual dookie. Having to take long-range shots, because again, there was no sort of link-up. At least with um, Levante, we had a strike partner. And we can get a few one-twos on the go. So it was a match of very few chances. But as you can see... I've got 5.9 there, and I'm doing all the link-up play, all the hold-up, all the shots. But yeah, if I don't hit the objectives, and like I say, most of the time the objectives are three or four shots on target. 
Um, at least 55 to 65 percent possession for the whole team, which again I don't get why I'm part of that midfield. I get it if I was a midfielder, uh, and then sort of usually win a game. But like I said, look, I'm setting brothers up, and even then, oh, they can't even make those finishes. A good save in the end. But yeah, I'm getting all the flat for it. And Lampard is talking about dropping me to the bench. Premier League top goal scorer, 20 odd goals, doing link up play like this. And I'm getting dropped. Can you believe it? Can you look at risk of being subbed? I got a 6.2, but as you can see, all the highlights of anything that decent is me doing the play. Me and Lampard are going to fall out, you know what I'm saying? Again, Reggie Boy Jr., again, having to just drive the defence, trying to break free himself, trying to make some space for himself. Oh, and again, another good save by Bournemouth. So as you can see, I got substituted off for Patrick Bamford, of all people. Don't touch me, Lampard. Get off me, man. 6.3. One shot attack. I had four shots in total, though. Two on target by the looks of those little green dots. So FIFA done me dirty there. Apparently, I didn't link up well enough. And the game petered out to a horrible nil-nil because obviously Bamford couldn't hit a barn door even if he tried. So nil against Bournemouth. Stop the rot of losing, at least. But again, not great. Only hit one of those three objectives. So again, I'm I'm using training to keep me in the starting eleven. <sighs> Clean sheet though, but unfortunately a draw dropped us down to sixth position. Which again, we're now trying to off the ball. I mean, we're having a good season still with Everton. I do believe they finished tenth or eleventh last season, so we are trying. So we then went on to Brighton again. A tough place to go. Brighton are a good team. Always find these gem of players. Still got Sanchez in goal. Got Jinta now from Germany. Back three, slightly different. Billy Gilmore's finally making some games. Hugo Duro, I don't know who that is. But they've got Insignia, who must be... Damn, he must be about 40 years old now, to be fair. I think he plays in the States now, I do believe. And as always, you can predict the Everton lineup. Five at the back, as always. The same five brothers. Truffert comes in at left back instead of Nkunku. Unana's in midfield this time. But it's the same thing. But I won't mind. But, oh, well, Dwight McNeil and Starr are supposed to be the ones that can kind of link up with me, but... We're kind of playing a 5-2-3. So in the snow at Brighton here. Again, we wanted to make a good start. Trying to keep up with Liverpool. And like I say, West Ham up there for some reason. 43 points. But yeah, again, I'm the focal point. Trying to get things going. Nice little move from Reggie Boy Jr. Great football in. And again, shot just off the post on the inside. How on earth that did not go in, I don't know. Hit the inside of the post. Trickle across the line. I'm thinking that's going to be another one of those days for us. Brighton again. In the snow. Making some good little pings left and right. But like I say, defensively, we need to be sharper today. And a good save from Pickford. Another chance for Reggie Boy Jr. A near post header. Nearly in as well. Beautiful header down. But again, just can't find that goal at the moment. And we're on a bad run of not scoring for a couple of games. But you can see, look, 5.8 again at risk of getting subbed again. So I need to score pretty much two goals a game. Make sure the team gets full possession. I mean, look at that. Having to break free, having to do things myself. But Reggie Boy Jr., when you know full well, he gets on that left Pegasus, he gets that goal. And we finally took the lead against Brighton. And Lampard sat down, told Bamford to sit your booty down. You ain't coming on this pitch. So, yeah, I'm fighting for my starting position. Can you believe it? We have to perform miracles each week. But good strength there from Reggie Boy Jr. And look at the left Pegasus right across Sanchez. And we won the game 1 0 thanks to Reggie Boy Jr. again. So, you'd have thought that would be enough. To keep me in the start at 11, but again, I didn't hit all my objectives. So I do believe I went down a little bit more, but more importantly, we got the three points for Everton. They're still chasing that Champions League football because the games are coming thick and fast now. And like I said, before we know it, in about two or three episodes, the season will be done. So at Brighton, we got a 7.2, two shots on target, but as you can see there, there's three greens, one wide, and one goal. So I don't know how that works out. Better at the dressing room atmosphere, but I still went down by a minus five, even though I hit two objectives. It's just <laughs> you need to sort this out for next year, otherwise I'm just going to do a manager mode thing. It's tough on the streets. So 20 games played, we're back in four position, but as you can see, look at Arsenal in eight, 35 points. Anyone can sneak those there. Champions League places. Last game of the episode, we went to this Etihad, Manchester City game. Finally, a team we can play against who, again, you don't have much possession, but one of the objectives was to have 55% possession, but you do get more chances in the games because they play a bit more open and expansive, but Man City's team is still looking very, very similar, to be honest. Only Rudiger's in there, it's slightly different. Cancelo's come back and Cabore's at right back. As always, Pickford picked the same team for the 110th day in a row. Oh my goodness, and Kunku and Truffert do swap over though. Andrich and Duokure came into midfield instead of uh, Onana and your boy up front, holding on to his starting 11 position. But again, we need another goal to make sure we stayed in this. As always, City had a lot of possession. We're trying to hit him on the counter-attack. 
And everything, look, I mean, look at that. How am I supposed to deal with that kind of thing? Come on, brother. Hook a brother up with some decent passes, man. Haaland again, running the roost as always, the Robocop. And Man City just ping it around beautifully. But we did well. Man City holding them off to some long range shots. Trying to hit him on the counter attack. But like I said, Man City moved the ball so quickly. That would be a good move. I mean, I don't think I can uh, get Haaland out of his starting position. But Man City would be a good move. I'm hankering for more of a Liverpool move as much as that would upset the Everton team. But look at that ball forward. I'm saying, Sa, square it back, square it back. He went for the shot and he got blocked. But yeah, Liverpool think obviously still have Firmino. They still have Nunes. And I reckon I could maybe shift one of those two out of the starting eleven and play at Anfield next season would be great. But you cannot pick your team that you want to go to. Good save from Pickford though. Be nice if you could. But yeah, one of the big teams in the Premier League would be really good. Uh, well, the big top four ever and our big team. And again, oh, Reggie Boy Jr. unlucky with a block on the line from Rudiger. And again, trying to find that space and a great save from Edison. So again, only a 6.1 at the moment. Trying to score against this beast of a keeper with a left Pegasus power. Well, look at this great save from Edison. But yeah, we'll see what comes up. Like I say, I would love to stay in the Premier League again next season. If we can't find the move that's good for us, we might stay with Everton if we are in Europe. But as soon as the move comes forward, we'll try and make a move from Everton. Try and find a team that warrants our attacking ability. But beautiful play again from Everton. And again, Reggie Boy Jr. should have probably squared it that time. But we're creating chances against City, which is good. Like I said, if we can get three points against these who are fighting at the top of the league, it'd be good for us. But Haaland got in behind. Branthwaite trying to track him down. Luckily for us, Haaland was on his own. Ping across. And again, an excellent save from Pickford from Foden shot. We were penned in then for the last 20 minutes. Pickford having to make save after save. I'm getting, I'm getting marked down for return to position. I'm trying to defend and help out and say return to position. Winning headers even at the top against two men. And then finally, look, making it. Make it that run. Make it that run. Break free. Let's go. I think I'm in. Left Pegasus. And he scuffs it wide, Reggie Boy Jr. And with that, Lampard. Substituted me again. Don't touch me, bro. 6.4 rating. Again, it says I had one shot, but I had four. Well, three on target, two wide. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Fever update your game, please. I'm getting murked here. But crazily enough, even me coming off, Evan actually managed to find the winner. We broke the game down early doors. Man City just couldn't handle us. And Diokore, of all people, was clean through. And what a finish. And Everton led with 10 minutes to go at the Etihad. Can you believe it? Maybe they don't need me. Maybe they need Bamford. Oh my goodness. So yeah, my goal scoring uh, run had dried up, I must admit, in the last couple of games. But we'll be back, don't you worry. Man City tried everything to find that equaliser. But look at that. We put an absolute wall in front of everybody. Header down and Pickford saves us in the last couple of minutes. Beautifully done. And like I said, we got a free kick towards the end. And we could have made it too. I mean, it is the final kick of the game. But over the wall, off the bar. But we held on. I mean, my goodness, a 1-0 win at the Etihad is huge for us. I do believe we beat Man City at home as well, so we may have done a double over City, but what a win for Everton. I'm just pleased with the three points, not pleased with my performance, because like I say, I have to score every game to seem to be not to be substituted by to Patrick Bamford, of all people. No disrespect, Bamford, I love you, brother, but I mean, come on, man. Absolute liberties, man. I've got 20-odd goals in the Premier League, but yeah, I'm getting substituted. But Ducore, give us that win. Again, we're man 15 on the old objectives. Only got one of the three. But I'm happy for the boys. We've got the win. Sars happy. He's dancing around. Don't dance with me, bro. Okay, man. A bit of personal space, brother. So that brought us back into third. Can you believe? Seven points off West Ham and Liverpool. But as you can see, only four points ahead of eighth place Newcastle. So 17 games to go. Plenty to play for. We've got Brighton in the FA Cup next. Uh, we've got Burnley and Leeds in the league again. So a little bit of revenge against Leeds and Leicester and Crystal Palace. So again, I'm looking at thinking a potential good 9 to 12 points. Still 26 goals in the Premier League in 20 games. Mir at West Ham has 15. Diaz has 15. Uh, Assist-wise, uh, I am ranked in 13th with 4 assists. Martinez is top with 9. So again, we could get some more assists, I do believe. But 83 rated. Uh, 84 rated, I do get a new contract and a bit more money. <coughs> I'm doing lots of investments now and buying lots of things to get my play up as best I can. But so far, so good. 20 years old, still looking a beast. Uh, four star skill moves, three star weak foot, would you believe? That left Pegasus is not three star, it's at least five star. That left Pegasus is unbelievable. So, yeah, we are getting there. I think I need to work a bit more on my pace, a bit more on the passing, maybe a bit more strength as well. But anyway, brothers, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Hit that like button for me, it really helps out. I'll get a Caribbean FC episode out as quick as I can. But in the meantime, peace and love, brothers and sisters. And I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.